Hello and welcome to part 12 of my PGR2 Platinum walkthrough. New video, new series. Uh, this new series is called Track Day Specials or Track Specials. And well, we are for the first time in Germany, as many of you have recognized it already, on the Nordschleife. This is the final stretch, the very long straight. And we're using, of course, a new car because it is a new series. And this time it's a Porsche 911 GT3 996, um, possibly 2003, 2004 model, I guess. I don't understand why it is a Trex special, but yeah, if they if they categorize it that way, then it's okay. So yeah, the first challenge is a hot lap as you can see on, on the timer I have added it in to the right and it's a rather short one under two minutes in total only one uh, only two corners left this one the right and left hander and then it's only pedal to the metal until the finish line so how much time is gonna be left roughly a second not too bad Well, the last race we started symbolically with a German car, with the German car maker Porsche, on the German track, the still probably most difficult racing track, race track in the world, and one of the longest, if not the longest still. I heard some rumors about a Swedish track, which is supposed to be longer, I believe it already is built, it already exists, not sure though. But anyway, the Nordschleife is still the most special and important racetrack in the world, in my opinion, and one of the um, most fun ones, for sure. And I have clocked thousands, many thousands of virtual laps on it already. Unfortunately, I didn't have... Well, I did have certainly opportunities, but I... I just didn't do it yet, I didn't drive on it in real life and um, that's for a very simple fact, the insurance won't cover your um, your accident even if you're not at fault, like literally if even drive someone drives into you then the, your insurance company and neither his will will pay for, for the damages so yeah it's a re really really risky undertaking if you think if you think about it so i definitely want to do it once at least in my life and i will i know i will but i guess i'm gonna wait a little bit more anyway so this time was a new car which is the noble m12 
3 GTO or something, but which is a great car by the way. But um, well, yeah, more to that later. Have fun with the replay. So, third challenge of the series, and it's again a hot lap, again on the Nordschleife. And we're basically also very short, but barely over a minute. We're starting basically where we stopped the last race. So all these challenges, they are basically built upon each other. You start the next challenge where you left off in the last one. So anyway, so this is this very quick, very fast stretch of the of this of the track. Now the right hander under the under the bridge and down to what is it called? I, I mean, I should know as a motorsports fan and as a German what all of these um, parts of the track are known big because many, even many um, non-Germans know it, but I never learned. So I believe this was Brünchen or. Döttinger Höhe? No, probably not. Döttinger Höhe is probably the straight um, at the end. But, well, um, anyway, um, yeah, I'm using a new car, which is the Dodge Viper SRT10. Phenomenal car, I love it. Always loved it in every game I, I tried it out. Um, nothing bad about it, in my opinion. But yeah, not much to say in such a short time. <laughs> so, um, have fun with the replay. So the next challenge is yet again a hot lap, yet again on the Nordschleife, this time with the new car though, the Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale. I like the name because in Russian Stradaj means to suffer. I guess that has nothing to do with the word Stradale, uh, the Italian word. I don't know what it means, but uh, yeah, I kind of just found it funny as someone who does speak Russian, German and English and sometimes the words sound very similar but have completely different meanings and sometimes they do sound similar and have the same meaning because 
uh, well like the one word in this language is derived from the same word from another language like um, well if, you, if we make the connection between an Italian and Russian there uh, there is actually at least one word I know that is used in both languages um, tomatoes in, in Italian means pomodoro and in Russian pomidor so yeah at least I know one word <laughs> that is that is similar but anyway enough of the stupid language lesson uh, so this challenge once again not really difficult well with this car actually you do need to be really good as you will see because it was really close but still quite doable it's a fantastic car and well yeah there we go we're through Alright, the next challenge is yet again on the Notch Lifer. This time it's a head to head, and I'm using for the second time the Dodge Viper SRT 10, which I really love and which is quite comparable in speed to the challenge Stradale in front of us. But going back to my lacking knowledge of the Notch Lifer, um, track parts names while I do not know the names I do know the track very well if you've seen my channel you know I have uploaded a lot a lot of Morsch Life hot laps in GT5, GT6 and GT Sport or off GT5 and GT Sport so yeah I do know the ins and outs of this track I know it very very well I know every single corner the the speed you would need to take basically for each type of car or each car and tire and yeah um, I could drive the track in my mind without a without a problem like I have memorized it basically pretty perfectly yeah so here's the right hander um, leading to the very very long straight we have very fast multiple corners but to me it's basically just a hugely long straight it's called though if I it's um, right after Bergwerk then it's to Kesselchen Klostertal and this is the entire part called you've just seen but we've not driven it to the end the long straight
So the next challenge is a street race, this time in Stockholm though, three laps during the day, in the dry, thankfully. And this time we're using again the Noble M12 GTO3, this is what it's called, I need to memorize the name. And I did opt for this car as the class leading car, it is noticeably the fastest car in in the, in the challenge and uh, the series at least going around the track it is because yeah as you can see obviously the the game would put the class leading car yet again at the at the beginning of the field and yeah it's very difficult to catch up to it with anything else than the class leading car itself i must smash that up pretty badly doesn't look good although it didn't even look good before before the accident like it's really not a pretty car it's a very track focused car as well all of these cars more or less are because yeah, it is the track special series um, but you can definitely see it the most on this car it looks like a race car for the road basically because it pretty much is exactly that and this is how it drives, very stiff suspension, very hard, very harsh, but very, very quick through the corners. A lot of downforce with the spoiler and the whole chassis and the whole aerodynamics of the car. But yeah, it's still it's very, very quick in a straight line uh, in acceleration at top speed, actually. Fantastic brakes, of course. And this is the best car, especially on, on tracks with a lot of turns, tight turns, where you would need a lot of downforce. I like this section, very long straight next to the river. Beautiful scenery. And heartbreak, far too late though. Clean race bonus, long gone probably. Now here, this part you know already very well if you've watched my series, which is used very often in the Swedish Stockholm challenges. Very bumpy part, very very quick too. Now this difficult turn, yeah. Well driven though, at this time around. The good thing is about most tracks at least that you can see where the ideal breakpoint would be like here because you see you actually see the uh, the rubber on the road so this is like a good uh, reference point as to as to know where to break ideally and it works in over 90 cases 90% of the cases i would say so yeah absolutely use that if you don't know where to break
Okay, so the next challenge is in Stockholm again, but this time it's the overtake challenge and we got 2 minutes, minutes and 10 seconds to succeed to overtake 7 cars. And well, this time we're using the challenge Stradale, the Ferrari 360. The right car for such a challenge, this challenge Stradale. <laughs> Bad job. Okay, two cars down, five left. The bumpy part behind us. Now comes the somewhat easier part. Going to the right. Oh, taking on another Ferrari, the Tesserosa. Which is the star car also of Miami Vice? No? Fourth car, the Lotus is pre. Oh, I'm sorry for that. That was dirty. I am. And there goes my clean race bonus. So, the bumpy part again. Small track layout, it seems. Oh, that was cool. Good slide through there. I like this corner though. And I've mostly driven it pretty well. Just feels good to drive through there, I don't know why. Nice right hander. Overtaking another Ferrari, which is the 550. Now clipping the wall there, that was close. Now comes the bumpy part again. And, no, oh, no, we didn't hit the wall. Good on me, good on me. So this should be the last car, but it isn't. Now the 575 Maranello. A lovely car. Love it so much. Oh, the nemesis of this challenge is the SL55 AMG. Fitting for this track, type of track, with its handling characteristics. It's difficult to explain, but yeah, this is how I feel. Anyway, I'll leave you alone with the replay. So the next one is a timed run, the first one in this series, I believe. And of course I would be using the class leading car, as I never forget to mention is that all the timed runs and the hot laps are pretty difficult, especially the hot laps, but some of the timed runs also, and yeah, it's more or less very necessary to use the, um, the 
serious class leading car. Like here. Pretty long one, I believe. Yeah, two laps here. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken. And a longer layout. There goes my clean race bonus. My laps while doing this big mistake. Well, 10 seconds ago. Uh, we're still pretty good because this challenge here was really tough and the corner I just did was very very hard to get right and I surprisingly I came through through it surprisingly well in my opinion but here's the next faster bumpy part if I'm not mistaken no not really Dif slightly different layout this time which is great, I think. Very beautiful scenery. Ah, that was bad. Now oh, here comes the bumpy part again. Here it is. Next to the river and this, this bridge. Here it is again. And now to the left. Yep, that was one lap. Or actually... Now it was one lap, and the last lap begins. I would be surprised if anyone was able to to win in this challenge with with another car. I mean, the this one is the class leading, and after this. Three cars are more or less equally quick, which would be the 911 GT3 996, the 360 Challenge Stradale, and the Dodge Viper SRT10. Those three are more or less equally quick around the track and are not that far behind this car. Maybe someone was or is able to do this challenge with the other cars. I tried, but failed miserably, so yeah, I opted again for the best in order to succeed. This lap is quite a bit better than the first one. At least it's much cleaner. There are two more cars to this class, which is the Opel Speedster 220 or Fox Vauxhall Speedster 220 and the Lotus Elise oh, GT3 is it called that way? I'm not very sure. The Lotus itself is already very very hopelessly underpowered for this class but the Vauxhall or Opel 220 is like a complete joke in this class but yeah more to that later. Anyway we came through with a second to spare.
So the next challenge is a hot lab, again for Stockholm, and obviously we will be opting for the Noble yet again, because of the aforementioned reasons. Almost two minutes for this one, so a long lab, a really long lab. Driving such a quick car for almost two minutes, two minutes on the limit means basically that this is a rather long layout. In the rain though, and it actually does make it quite a bit more difficult. Certainly it's not a simulation where you would need to adapt your driving style greatly and obviously if it would be a simulation you would be you would see it because you can just see by like just by sight that obviously the physics are still very very forgive forgiving but yeah there's still a difference between dry and wet tracks and quite honestly it would be lame if that would not be the case I remember this ph phenomenon in many racing games, even on the PlayStation 3 generation, possibly even on the 4th generation. And earlier, where when it started to rain, the grip level would only... And that was great, did you see that? Clipping the wall and <laughs> just shooting yourself into the next corner. That, that was definitely not planned, but a great execution there for me anyway. Um, well, where the grip re levels would only change for you as the player, but not for the AI, and the AI would continue with the grip levels of a dry track even if it rains, even if the track is is wet already and you're affected by it, which I thought always to be so lame because, because it destroyed the entire race, like there was no chance in hell you could ever keep up with them on a, on a wet track while they are driving as if it's still dry, but yeah just a little annoyance of many racing games and we threw with very little time left So, in the next challenge I opted for the Lotus Exige, this is how it's called. Definitely a track specials car. I'm driving through Stockholm yet again, it's a head-to-head -head, as you can see, and in the rain again. And we're racing, racing against the 911 GT3 996. And I had to do this in order to win, to have a chance. Yeah, I spun him out, 
otherwise you would have no chance with this car and this is the challenge of the series the only challenge where you would be able to win it with this car and I wanted to use it at least one time so from the beginning you needed to drive as quickly as possible really like maxing it out completely the car and only then you would, would be able to catch up to the Porsche at that corner where I did and sp spin it out so yeah so you would get the lead and could drive through through the finishing line as the first one he's right behind us already by now he just made some mistakes otherwise he would have won you will see that in the replay better so yeah the Lotus is hopelessly under underpowered and disadvantaged Alright, so the next challenge is an overtake challenge through Florence, Italy, and I'm using the Novo this time. Because yes, as always, I did try the challenge with some other cars, but to me at least, it was pretty much impossible to beat this challenge with any other car than this one. While with this one, it was quite honestly pretty easily, pretty easy. So one car down, which was the Aston Martin V12. Vanquish. So second car down, which is the Bentley, and five cars left. As this time, we 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 have to overtake seven cars, which is mostly the target in those overtake challenges, at least in the higher classes. So there's the third car, Lotus Esprit V8. Fourth car now also down, the Testarossa. Only three cars left and we still got more than two minutes on the clock. My driving isn't too bad, but a little bit unclean. Mm, 666 kudos points. The devil had his hand in this race, huh? Well, not anymore. So I needed over half a minute to reach this car. So that should be should have been the fifth car, Mercedes-Benz SLS SL55 IMG. Yeah, the Noble is just super quick. Very good through the corners, extremely good brakes. One minute left, no. Two cars left to overtake. This should be the 550, yeah it is. And I'm certainly going to overtake it here after the bridge. Yep, I did. And now going for the last one, which most certainly will be the 550, uh, 575 Maranello. Okay, half a minute left. Over a thousand kudos points by now. Basically, 
Ah, uh, 15 seconds left? No. Still didn't. Still didn't get. passed by. But now I did. Yeah, with the Nobu it was relatively easy. Next race is a time run in Florence. During the night, though, two laps. And yes, of course, I would be using an old slightly over two minutes for this challenge. High speed part here. Here again, the right hander, full throttle, and hard break after the bridge. Very tight, 90 degrees corner to the left. Oh, that was good. this part a lot. A hard break to the left. Easy to, to lose their time. Here too, yeah, take it um, more from the inside. Nice, good, good racing, racing line there. This is a very technical corner. That was okay, not too bad. And we're done with one lap. So only this lap left. Oh, that was okay. 
Not too bad. Now the heartbreak again. Yeah, that was good. Very clean, very quick. We end my we we might even end up getting our clean race bonus. Wow, that was on the limit there. Oh, that wasn't perfect, lost a little bit of time, but still okay. It's very difficult to hit the right breaking point there. A little bit too early. You're just far too slow, a little bit too late, but you're almost in, into the wall. We're gonna break with the 1000 points. Kudos points bury here too, which is good. Oh, that was okay. Still enough to win it. Yep, half a second to spare even. And there it is, clean race bonus, yes. So no, now it's a hot lap through Florence again during the day though. One lap, because yeah, it's a hot lap. A very short one, 34.75 seconds I believe, or 34.5. And this time though I was actually able to beat the challenge without a car that is not the best car of its class. And in this case it's the 360 challenge Stradale. Absolutely not easy to beat the challenge of this car, but far from being impossible, in my opinion. Now this very technical corner again, and we're through with... Yeah, basically no time left. So the next challenge is in Florence again, but it's a street race, three laps during the night in the dry. And this time I opted for the 911 GT3. Great car, obviously. 
You've just seen at the back the Honda NSX Type R 2004 model, pretty sure it is. Phenomenal car, one of my absolute favorite cars ever, ever, ever. I love this thing. The sound is amazing. The handling is the best thing about the car. The design is great. Um, and it's it's performance on track based on, on its HP to weight ratio is phenomenal. Like, wow, what a car. I was just blown away by it in Gran Turismo 4. Then in Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. And basically in every single racing game after that. So yeah, here's again important to catch up to the class leading car as soon as you can. And this is what I did. Apparently, after that, you you can quite easily stay in the front. And why I'm saying that, he always almost overtook me. Oh wow, falling behind a little bit. Probably made even more mistakes. Now it's the Viper. Yeah, it's on the straight quicker than I am. That was dirty for me. I agree. Ooh, man, I shot him off the track, really. And now he is fifth. Ouch. There is the Honda and the Lotus. Exige. So that is me again. No. Oh. And another noble um, took the place of the la of the red noble and the red viper. Now here, this layout is somewhat new. Is it the first time we're driving through it? Could be. Here, I mean that one. Pretty cool, like this open space, and you can actually go to the right. And go from the um, from the right side. Relatively rarely used in in the game. This layout of the track, if I'm not mistaken. Oh well, that was his own mistake. Wow, did you see that? What a big crash! No, there he is, still in second place. Oh, there isn't another Nova. I was mistaken. No. Wow. That was a stupid mistake. This is what I meant. I just braked a little bit too early, a, bit, a little bit too much. Turned in a little bit too early and then I'm, I was kind of stuck. Stuck to the wall. Have a little damage myself. should be the last lap. Over a thousand points by now, great. And we're through.
All right, the next challenge is a head-to-head -head in Moscow for the KGB town city part, so to say. This is what it's called, like this track. And man, one of definitely one of my favorite challenges in the game. It was just so much fun hunting down the objectively much quicker noble M12 in my Porsche Porsche 911 GT3 996. Now oh, this corner is just great. Ooh, well oh, that was close. Almost lost it. It was important to me to beat it with something else than a noble, and I did. I just like this track very much, and there were some parts where the, uh, the AI just wasn't very quick, and I used that obviously to my advantage. I was able to catch up, like for these corners here now, the right hander where you need to take a lot of speed, yet yeah, take it from the inside, and good, now I'm in his slipstream in his draft and can take can use that to my advantage to overtake him now look what happens what he tries what a sucker honestly but for here I was quicker than him I had more balls did you see that how slow he went through there and that was it for his race now this corner again, which I took here very, very perfectly, nearly perfect. No, almost spinning on this time though. Now again in this corner, taking all of the speed on the straight, taking all of the space, using all of the space the track has to offer. Maximizing your top speed here before you need to break hard again. Well, not that hard. Now this S curves if you want so. And yet again taking all the speed on a very very long straight. That was okay. But my the gap between me and him is just too big. He wouldn't be able to catch up. I hope at least. Now that was quick. Not perfect by any means, but still very quick. What was it this like where I took the corner perfectly? No, that was a little bit slow. I was more cautious there this time around. That was good though. I'm not too far away from 1000 kudos points. Will we get the 100 points at the end of the race for the fastest lap? I don't know. Did we drive the fastest slab of this race? I would assume so. Okay, this is clean section. Clean race. And nope, he did drive the quickest lap.
Now comes the challenge, the speed trap challenge of this series on the notch life at this time. And I had to use the noble because I did try with basically, yeah, ev actually every single other car just to see how speedy they are. And it, in my opinion, it was only possible with the noble 209 km h and yeah, right at 130 mph. So this is through the um, through the small carousel or kleines Karussell in German and what was important is basically well to just have the right line and to use this white this white part of the track this one I'm driving on right now it gives you like this more grip and you just slingshot yourself out of the corner take all the speed and then it's basically pretty easily possible to beat it Alright, so this is the last challenge of this series. It's a street race on the Nordschleife and as we took symbolically the, the German automaker for the first challenge, which was also on the Nordschleife, we'll do it as well again here. Started this challenge on the Nordschleife with the German automaker and we will end it that way. That was important to me because because I'm weird, I don't know. Well, that wasn't too bad. I used the slingshot method, so to say, to call the speed on this straight here. And was hunting down two of the, no of the nobles. The AI tends to do a lot of mistakes on this track. I did try this challenge with the Honda NSX too, because I wanted um, it to be featured at least one time in this series, but yeah, it's I would have needed to, to try this challenge probably over a hundred times and hope that the AI would do a lot of mistakes in order to win it with the NSXR. Oh, that wasn't me actually, he started fumbling by himself and then I hit him. So yeah, now we're at the, in the front, at the front, in the lead. The track itself here in this game is a little bit too wide, I think. And, well, it's not that accurate. I re recognize immediately the layout. The layout itself, it's pretty good. Like here, the jump, that's realistic. Um, but, yeah, I really believe it's a little bit too wide. And just because of the physics of this game, it's far too fast. Like, the cornering speeds are ridiculous. In, in other racing games which are more simula simulation focused it's like it's completely not comparable you're just far too quick for the corners especially at the high speed corners you can take with with 70 or 100 kmh more than in simulation games or real life basically oh, well that was a bad mistake that was by the way the big carousel grosses carousel in german and now this is the last right-hander of the track before this huge long straight where you're reaching with these top speeds. And there we go. So yeah, that was the last race. I do hope you did enjoy it as always. I do hope you liked it. And if you did, consider leaving a like, a comment, maybe a sub, maybe share it somewhere. And well, we got 12... Uh, two parts still to go. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye